Uh, when I get people um, <coughs> working with me, I often get them to ask and say, um, are there any better tracks to bet on than the others? So we're all familiar with how Flemington is different from Caulfield. Caulfield is different from Mooney Valley. Um, the sorts of horses you get racing, um, say, at Sandown on a Wednesday are different to the sorts of horses you get racing at Flemington on a Wednesday, and so on. And, of course, there are country tracks and provincial tracks, and the horses that run at those places are always going to be of a different variety, a different class. But <clears throat> another important thing is some of the tracks are got short straights, long straights, big tracks, small tracks. Very, very difficult to work out, of course, uh, what we've done. Uh, we're going to sort out what are the best tracks to bet on, and we're going to do it according to two rating plans. One of those is wind form, where we basically rate horses on time. So you would think, therefore, that we're going to get horses that um, are going to, um, while I'm talking to you, I'll just pop this on. This is uh, race seven at Hawkesbury, the Rolly Mile. You can have a browse at what's there. I like uh, Embley a chance each way at around 40 to one today. And uh, it's only because uh, once he's had a couple of runs from a spell, he usually gets up there on the pace. And that's sort of suited at uh, Hawkesbury. But anyway, uh, getting back to uh, our point. <coughs> so Hawkesbury, for example, is a track where there's only basically one turn for most of the distances. Um, it's a clay-based track, and uh, apparently they run faster times there than on average at other tracks. So you'll get different results there. Also, some of the bigger tracks, you'll get more favourites win, um, than you do at other tracks. So we'll do the analysis. I'm just going to start up this uh, the database so that you can see how it all works. This will open up in a minute. And I've already put the information in based on a survey of the last three years and of wind form ratings. And I've, I've included everything. Haven't worried about the age of horse. Haven't worried about the distance. Haven't worried about the track conditions. Basically, it's just going to take into account the layout of the track the sorts of horses that race there, and the results we get uh, just by the way. In this particular one, we're going to limit the age to eight, which uh, means we're not going to get those hurdle races and so on in there. So I'm just running it for the last month we've got data for, and as I run this, it comes through, and I've sorted it out into the um, SP rank and so on. So you'll note there that we've made $14,890 that's for a $100 bet. 17% of the runners won. Now, there are two run, two, it's the top two horses here, you can see. So therefore, we've got a strike rate of 34% of winning races. Our profit on turnover is 14%. Our longest losing run here is 26. And because they've got two runners in every race that qualify, that means that we uh, once went 13 races without collecting a winner. But you'll notice now that um, we get a far, a very diverse uh, number of winners throughout the SP rank and various prices and so on. And you can see here that um, horses that were favourite represented 205 of those 1,050 um, uh, selections. And with those 205 bets, 40% uh, of those won and we made a profit of just under 3%. Okay, where we made some big results when we got a couple of outsiders out and so on. Now, our horse racing today selections... Uh, and I'll just go to that so I can just click on here and uh, look at these and I'll just run the tracks um, for you and uh, I've limited these to a soft five because um, within our analysis there's no way to analyze the uh, soft six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So um, we've left it to good tracks. We've found that works best. The age for these horses we find what works best is age three to six and it's a consensus so it's looking at a number of statistics and uh, working out what works best. Now, let's see what happens when we run this through for the same period of time. As you can see, we made a, um, a profit just the same. The interesting thing is here, the longest losing run was 12. And remember, we had two runners in each race. Okay. So in actual fact, we only went six races without a winner. But as you can see here, they're all focused, all focused around here on the top runners in the market. For example, uh, we had 254 favourites raced <coughs> in the, uh, at these tracks, which represents roughly 40% of the available races. 
we got the winner 37% times and we got a profit on turnover of 7.6%, which is really, really good. And also, the strike rate of races is 46%, so nearly every second race we were able to win. And mostly you'll find that these are um, locations where you do get a greater percentage of favourite wins. So notice 40% of favourites from our horse racing today selections were able to were actually favourites. Whereas if we go back to the win form, uh, just go back to these, let to take a second to run through, and we find that uh, for the same period, we still had 200 races with favourites in it and got a 40% strike rate, but it represents only 20% of the um, runners that we're on. So only 20%, um, and the race strike rate is less. So a different strategy. So for example, if you're running uh, these other horses and looking at those results, um, you would have a look there and you would say to yourself, okay, um, what I can afford to do here, I can run a money factory or something similar on that because I know that I'm going to get a fairly consistent good strike rate and uh, not have too many losing runs. On the other hand, if we go back to the WinForm Select Tracks and uh, look at those, then what we're going to find here is, because we're only got a race strike rate of 34% and we can lose 13 races in a row, but the average dividend is much, much higher. So um, we have made a total here of $15,000. We have made a profit of 14%. So it's a much higher percentage um, in terms of profit on turnover. And obviously we've got a lot higher dividend. I'll even work out what the dividend was for the month. We got a return of 14890. Divide that by the 183 winners and the average dividend for July was $8.13. And what that usually indicates is that you've been getting horses on wet tracks winning. And indeed, you can see there is one horse here uh, which won at 90 to 1. So um, even if we take that off, we take the nine, um, the um, 9,000 return or 8,000 off the profit, we still made a respectable profit of just under $7,000 for the month. I hope you understand what I'm getting at. And people often ask us, uh, well, we're, since we've been doing this, we've had people say, oh, why didn't you have any selections at Flemington? Or why didn't you have any selections here? Or why didn't you have any selections there? It's because we've gone through over three complete seasons. And this shows us currently what's going on. Now, another interesting thing, for example, you'll find Geelong Synthetic is in this list. Uh, we do have excellent results from the Geelong Synthetic track. Uh, really, really good. And of course, when they're favourite, they've got a really high strike rate as well. Um, the other interesting thing is the other artificial track, which is the um, Pakenham uh, track. We also get very, very good results from there. So it's really worth watching that. And the other one, we get some odd results, I must say, but from Devonport, which, as you know, is also an artificial track. So on the so on the artificial tracks, we do seem to be getting a bit of traction. <laughs> like that joke. OK, that's it for now. Thanks for having a look and any questions, you know where to find me and you can go to www.horseracingaustralia.com.au.